So I hope uh, everyone's doing great today. I'm definitely feeling well. Slightly tired after the recording of the guide, but uh, still very much motivated to do this daily challenge now. Um, let's look at what we got here. Stitching Guard, Melting Remnant, are the clans. Money bags, double gold earned, shields up, enemy unit center with damage shield, and musical chairs. Shuffle the position of all units in the train after combat. These are the mutators. When I look at the score, I see a lot of scores in the 45,000 regions. The top ones go to 47,000. So that makes me think it's going to be a relatively difficult challenge this time around. Um, I see some familiar names here on the top. I see Thanatos, a good friend and beta tester, Never Nathaniel, a great streamer. If you haven't already checked him out, you should do so. And Ice Lake, which I often see here on the top scores already on the first page. So let's see if we can keep up with them. Uh, musical shells is always a bit difficult to play around with. The only thing you can really rely on when musical shells is active is that no unit will be in the same position it was before. If a unit was in position 2 before, it will not be in position 2 after the shuffle. Um, shields up obviously makes things a bit more difficult as well, because having a damage shield on every enemy unit is going to be rough. Um, yeah, so let's jump into the run and see what we get. Yep, money bags. Money bags is powerful, but very often you can't really turn all that gold to power, so oftentimes it will be left over in the end, at least some part of it, and benefit your score. So our enemy is going to be the Seraph the Chased, who has Purifying Emblem. <sighs> Removes half buff and debuff effect stacks. Flash Freeze, Molten Encasement and Mollusk Mage are the starting cards. Flash Freeze very nice with damage shields to take them off with the initial hit and then the Frostbite can potentially kill the unit you applied it to. Mollusk Mage not that great with uh, musical chairs, pretty hard to use and these Molten Encasement better die the turn I play them, otherwise they will be a bit hard to predict. Um, okay, Icicle Fracture, Iron Drop Cage. Iron Drop Cage, we don't have any Ascent Descent. Uh, the only Ascent in Stygian is a rare that ascends units at the, on the pyre, to the pyre. Mm. Icicle Fracture, on the other hand, is a pretty powerful relic I do want here. So, usually I would like Sweep to get rid of the enemy's damage shields. Tethys is a bit difficult to use with musical chairs as well. Mm. Either of these could work out quite well, I suppose. I think I will go with the sweep, just because it also helps with the damage shield and we will need multiple sources of AoE damage to kill backliners to get rid of the damage shields as well as kill the units behind them. Mark of Invasion will be quite painful because of the damage shields, but it's still worth taking in my opinion. So. Because of the clergyman here, I can't really set up on the higher floors. Let's set up on the bottom here. I could prevent some damage by using these flash freezes. 
on two of these. Uh, these are gonna deal three then one damage each, so it's gonna be four damage from each of them, which will be 12. Taking out one of them is four damage less. Taking out the Apprentice of Light is also a consideration because he will reach the top floor, that's for sure. Currently he, he will hit twice. Uh, I think I'll start out with removing two of these guys and getting the damage shield of the Apprentice of Light. These second floor guys don't matter as much to me because they will be down to one health by the time they hit the pyre, uh, one attack. Good emoji to use as the gold sprite. Yeah, that, seem, that seems pretty good. Um, let's prevent these units from dying. Well, at least Tethys from dying with a molten encasement. And we could also place a train steward here. Another train steward here will take out the trusted priest, so we might be have a bit of an easier time finishing the apprentice. And we'll take the damage from this guy. Sadly no way to get the collector. Killing the boss will be hard, especially because Tethys is gonna be in the front. But I do have a train steward frozen, so I can play that in front of Tethys. Um, I'm gonna try taking out this top unit, so I don't have to take the damage to them. And I will also make sure to kill at least the disciple foot soldier here. With a drag in the front line, that should be enough. Molten encasement would also work instead of a train steward, it might even be a bit better. We'll take the damage from both of them, apply stealth, but the stealth will immediately wear off, so it's not that much better. Hmm. It's basically just the same as train steward, but for one but for one capacity less. Which I guess is an improvement. Um, even if I play Mollusk Mage here, there won't be enough to defeat the Disciple Foot Soldier. I should probably Flash Freeze it. And then I will play the Mollusk Mage, so I have another uh, Spell Weakness application on that unit. We won't deal any damage to this apprentice of life, but we need to care about the boss more than this guy. Because we might not be able to kill the boss at all otherwise. The frostbite is definitely helpful. Another train steward will prolong this combat by two turns, which is not quite enough just yet. So let's play out the torch and kill the boss on the top floor if that's something we are capable of. Uh, actually a train steward here will be enough because of all the frostbite we managed to put on him. Okay, Titan's Tooth is very exciting. Because not only does the initial hit get rid of all the damage shields, the frostbite will make sure they will also take some damage and probably die. Uh, don't want more molten encasements and whiplash and purifying clans are probably not the things that will benefit us in the long run, so let's skip. What I'm really looking for is an armor or sap totem, so I can circumvent the problem with musical chairs of the wrong unit being in the front. 
but we won't get that from a Stygian banner, but we will got other units that synergize with uh, those cards, potentially. So like almost any incant unit. Cold Salia then. It's good at dealing with uh, damage shields. Doesn't need high attack because the sweep will hit the damage shields most of the time. Endless health or attack. Uh, quick is not even gonna do that much here on Cold Celia. So I don't really need to look for quick. I probably should give her some extra health and call it a day. Multi strike would work pretty well though. <laughs> Didn't get multi-strike, did get large stone though. I will just do it's called Celia on the bottom floor by itself, which uh, is gonna be helpful of getting rid of weak units. Hey, tryhard only! Thank you very much for subscribing with Twitch Prime! Welcome to the stream and enjoy your emote in chat. Do we want to remove anything here? I think so. We do have a lot of gold. I think these molten encasements are pretty bad, but they are probably still a bit better than the train stewards. Uh, frozen lances, I think we still need them to make use of this magic power and the spell weakness we apply. So they can wait a bit longer before they get removed. Okay, enemy unit center with armor 10. That on top of the damage shield will make it a bit awkward. Don't really have a great way of dealing with those. Um, still Cold Sally on the bottom floor seems like a good choice. This drag will move to the front next turn. And let's also play a drag here to have some extra damage against this unit here. Um, I could kill the Collector with a Flash Freeze and I probably should do that. Molten Encasement keeps my drag around. Let's kill this guy. I do want that gold. And it's probably not a bad idea to apply some more frostbite to this guy. Or maybe this. Maybe it's better to actually kill the disciple foot soldier instead. This guy will have some spell weakness, so we might be able to get him with a spell here. And we are indeed able to do that. Thanks to Mr. Mollusk Mage. Uh, the molten encasement moved to the back, which is not ideal. Uh, if this Cold Celia has enough time to deal damage to the boss, we will probably get the kill with her alone. So I'm willing to try that. And we do. Thanks to the power of Frostbite stacking. Or maybe thanks to the power of high stats. <laughs> Another Titan's Tooth. Yeah. We really want some discount now. Dripfall? Is Dripfall something we're interested in? Uh, to some degree. Not that much, but still not bad. I think I will pass. It's gonna be hard to make good use of it. Wickless Baron, Paraffin, Thark, Icy, Silophyte. Uh, Wickless Baron could in theory be used on the bottom floor with the uh, Cold Celia. Uh, I don't like that idea enough to go for it though. Dupe? Uh, do we want to dupe the Cold Celia? It's pretty powerful. 
Uh, it would have been better if we had taken the trip fall so we could actually descend them on the same floor, but maybe we want we just want a free relic here. I think it's a bit too early for the dupe right now. The first help act versus cleansing water. Cleansing water is really good here. I like the first help pack, but cleansing water means we have a 50% chance of removing the damage shields. Mm, Wickless Tycoon. We don't need that much gold though. And it's not great stats. I can't really afford to use the perch on the cold cellia, but we do have very good spells to perch. The Titan's Tooth. I like that. Uh, there's a pretty big chance that Titan's Tooth is gonna become zero cost. Two out of three upgrades we get from we could get from this guy are gonna make the spell zero cost. The other one is uh, will heal our pyre if we keep the card in hand, which is also pretty decent because we do have the uh, icicle fracture. Let's start out with Cold Celia on the bottom floor. Um, I don't want Tethys to be on the top floor because constructed uh, because uh, we do want a chance to make use of the sweep. So I will play the train steward to catch the bomb. This bomb has damage shield too, yeah. And um, Mollusk Mage can be on the top floor to hit whatever Tethys. Whatever spell Tethys wanna have. Well, whatever I wanna play on the weakened units, spell weakened units. Um, Molten Encasement is definitely great to tank the bomb. I can probably deal with the Forge Disciple on the top floor. I will play a Train Steward here, which will be in front of the Mollusk Mage next turn to protect against the Forge Disciple. And let's start applying some Frostbite to the boss. Also, a little bit of extra damage from the drag can help here, I guess. This is okay, I don't mind the train steward dying this turn. Uh, I think we will just Titan's Tooth. Uh, maybe we can Titan's Tooth on the top. That would make the train steward survive and would apply some uh, damage to Daedalus. Cold uh, Frostbite. Which will help me get the bottom floor kill. Let's also do these drags. Uh, this front drag will die, so the back drag will go in front of the Tethys. This guy would already die, but my Mollusk Mage would die with him. Which I'm currently not happy about. But the Titan's Tooth here on the middle or on the bo bottom floor would be very good. Uh, but playing some units might be better. So let's use a frozen land here on the top. I should have used the other one. Uh, because that wasn't frozen. Uh, we can flash freeze this guy, which will be almost enough to kill him. And I guess here on the bottom floor, the train steward takes all the damage from all these units. Which is good. Preserves the health on our Cold Celia. Now we need some additional damage here on the top floor. That Forge Disciple in the back will already die. So maybe just a Frozen Lance with the Bell Weakness is enough. Uh, Tethys needs some help here. That's a bit too much damage. Let's use the Molten Encasement to save her. And uh, bottom floor looks all right. Uh, this is gonna be not quite enough. Kill this guy. So I might as well use it on Daedalus instead. 
Next turn will be uh, Daedalus, I think. Yep. There we go. And we win on the bottom floor, so we can ignore these waves going on. That just add for more frostbite. Spike of the Stygian Ram Impact Formless Child. Formless Child is interesting, but probably not that necessary, especially with some of these units like Molten Encasement, it's pretty bad. Spike of the Stygian. Probably not good enough right now. If we had taken the first hell pact, I would take the spike, but we didn't because cleansing water is so strong in this uh, challenge. Yeah, I'll skip here. Siren of the Sea. We could start doing something with Encant here, but anyway, it's just a good unit on the same floor as Ted is. It can deal damage from the back and it can uh, tank some damage as well. So it's not that bad with musical chairs. Uh, currently I do lack Ember, but that will get a lot better once we find a Merchant of Magic. Uh, which might be on this next floor. Very likely will be on this next floor. Uh, maybe I'll wait until this one and take the card removals here. Let's take draw. We will want some draw if we wanna use the incant cards. Let's go to the left here, let's pick up the pyro remains. Let's look at the merchant of steel and not a large stone. That's probably not gonna do it. Nope, I don't think we want another large stone. I'm looking for a more defensive upgrade, like health for my Siren, or maybe Multi-Strike. Multi-Strike is definitely good, and just double health based stats. It's probably good enough. Do I want health on anyone? Yeah, maybe the Mollusk Mage. And then we remove some cards. These tracks are still somewhat useful, maybe better than a Molten Encasement even. But the trains you want are actually wor the worst here. Because they take up two capacity. Let's also remove the final one. Um, apply Frostbite. We are pretty heavy in Frostbite and not so much in spell damage. So I think I consider switching here. Well, I will switch here. Because the. It's also nice to have one sweep, so we apply frostbite to all the enemies. Uh, this should go pretty well. This 15 armor is not that scary on these guys because they already have a decent amount of health anyway, so uh, it's not like they will be that much harder to kill. Um, the molten encasement will not work on this floor, not work very well at least. I will play out the drag and just let it die because it's not much else to use. And I will play the molten encasement on the top so I can freeze the time to do it for next turn. Hmm. Mollusk Mage on the top seems good because we get the collector kill easily. And we do want the Mollusk Mage to be on the top anyways. I can save Tethys with the single drag here. So if I want to cast two spells, I can do that. And I think I need some extra damage to kill these guys. Especially on the back line. Maybe just a flash freeze is okay. And play the Molten Encasement so Tethys doesn't take any damage at all. And burn another break here to keep the Cold Sandia healthy. Um, this backline needs a bit more damage. But the Titan's Tooth on the bottom floor could be very strong this turn. I think it's a good time for a Titan's Tooth here. And let's prevent some damage to the Siren. Oh. 
And this guy here on the top will not quite die just yet. Which is a bit of an issue. Do the frozen lands to kill him. Uh, here Tethys is gonna die unless we kill the light harnesser in front. Which we don't quite have the damage to do. So we can't save Tethys here. Like two frozen lands would be the closest we could get. So let them back kill this backline. This clip defender doesn't matter. He can't deal damage to our pyre or our units. Let's also remove the damage shield and apply some frostbite to this guy. So we have an easier time killing him. Uh, and here I think I want to play multiple spells. Make sure these guys die. Uh, this guy doesn't quite die. I should have played both uh, Frostbite on that guy, maybe. Now our Cold Celia is not quite enough anymore. But we can get a uh, quite decent amount of extra damage out on the boss. And Frozen Lance here doesn't do anything. So we'll use a Frozen Lance to can we will need a few more in country goes to uh, maybe a bit more frostbite as well. It's not quite enough. Another frozen lands won't change that, so let's play out of self mutilation. And here we win. Thanks to all the frostbite. Not a uh, Great fight for us, but we still managed to prevent taking damage at least. Ice Storm, Drain and Preserve. Drain seems decent, especially considering we have Titan's Tooth, which is a good discard. And Drain helps us keep our units alive, which is important. Subsuming Blade, Resin Removal. These are interesting, uh, interesting cards. Hey Hidden Away, welcome! Nice to see you. Subsuming Blade. Subsuming Blade can be quite powerful and it does pierce damage shields, so yeah, I do want it. Let's see what upgrades we'll get. Add a copy of the this card to your discard pile. Okay, let's hold on to it. Let let him hold on to it so we he can he can remove the cost from it. And zero cost. Copying Titan's Tooth is very powerful. Uh, we have so much gold, we want to hit every shop possible and get these upgrades. Double stack the drain is very interesting. I think it's a bit more powerful than on the Titan's Tooth. Let's cost reduce the Subsuming Blade one. And... Search Stone on a Frozen Lance is fine. Then we reroll permafrost. Um, we don't really need that as much because we have the icicle fracture. Let's cost reduce the flash freezes. Magic power can go on the subsuming blade, but I'd rather have holdover. On the titan's tooth is probably a bit better. And then let's remove a drag. And uh, Molten Cakes. Yeah, this daily is definitely tricky. Another drag and the final encasement can go out of the deck. So we have a higher spell density, which is nice. Let's pay some health for an up. I clicked too fast. I didn't want that artifact. Oh well, now we are stuck with it. That's actually a pretty bad artifact, especially with uh, musical chairs, but also at every other time, basically. Cold Celia wants to be on the bottom floor, but we could. I could see an argument for her being on the second floor. Uh, probably not. 
probably best to just have the Tyrant of the Sea and Tethys here. Called Sally on the bottom and then we subsuming blade one of these guys. That means we will take more damage and these will die anyways. Uh, subsuming blade one of these guys. Still means our pyre will take more damage, so probably not. So we subsuming blade this guy. Just to get a play here. Okay, um, this is a bit of a problem. We can use the drag as a blocker. Or we can use the drain. The drain is probably the better idea. Sap uh, 6. We'll have Sap 6 here, Sap 5 here, Sap 4 on the top floor. So he will not do damage in the first hit. We play Sap last though. Because we want to make sure we can play the other cards. Let's put the Mollusk Mage here to get the Collector for now. Uh, this guy needs some more. Uh, frostbite. Uh, we could remove six damage here, but we could instead apply s even more frostbite to this guy. Uh, let's also play a drag, probably here on the bottom floor to prevent some damage. And then let's drain. Uh, we didn't discard the time, but it's okay. We freeze it in that, that's fine. So this guy will die once he reaches the pyre room, so he's not an issue. Um, Subsuming Blade is not quite enough to kill the Cliff Defender just yet, so let's use it on the Quill Marksman instead. Um, we can do the same thing with this guy with Drain. If we could kill him otherwise, I wouldn't mind. Flash rate is actually enough. So I can drain this guy. Similar reasoning. But this guy will actually hit the Cold Celia first, so draining him saves us some health on the Cold Celia as well. And uh, with. He will have drain 5, 4, 3, so. Yeah, and he will have a lot of frostbite, so. No problem there. These guys don't really matter. So let's kill the backliner here. And then the other units don't really matter. So let's just play as many spells as possible here. For some incant. And then we drain this guy as well. The drain is proving really valuable. Especially in this small deck where we draw it every turn. Let's kill this guy. Play some spells on this floor. And drain. And finally, same procedure here on the bottom floor. Um. Frostbite stacking. Could play the subsuming blade for 17 damage. I guess I will do that. And then we drain. Which is not quite enough to get the kill, but we get a lot of frostbite out of it. As well as a lot of damage. And now I will subsuming. Uh, that's a bit too much shells. Uh, if I drain this guy, he has 55 frostbite, he will have 12, so Teth is, yeah, that's enough. Uh, I just want that kill. Yeah, I picked the Melting Spout up accidentally. I in no way, shape or form wanted it. Uh, 
crystalline seeds, urchin spine strain. We don't have big hitting spells except for the subsuming blade, but maybe the subsuming blade is reason enough to pick up the urchin spines. It does consume after all, so it doesn't bother our deck composition. We can still draw into the subsuming blade and the drain every turn. But crystalline seeds. Crystalline seeds is probably worth in this deck. Wicked Blaze, Resin Removal, Intent on Death. I mean, Resin Removal still clears enemy damage shields, but that's not that big of a problem anymore for us. Intent on Death and Wicked Blaze are pretty much useless in this deck, so let's skip. And now we get our secret weapon, the Zero Cost Titan's Tooth that duplicates itself whenever we play it. We definitely want another upgrade on that. Like double stack, for example. But we can't get an upgrade here. We do already have our units upgraded. Well, most of them. So let's go for some relics. This might be pretty helpful. Rules of containment is not bad. A little bit of extra frostbite. Check strips. These are all, these are both quite good. And Founding Seal, that's very nice. We don't need Flicker Slicker, we are not playing that many units, so... And then Unstable Vortex. Let's remove the Frozen Lands and the Final Drag. So our deck is gonna be very small, very, very sleek and efficient. So with the two relic, maybe we don't want to set up on the bottom floor anymore. Ah, never mind. It's uh, it's this version of Fell. We do want to set up, set up on the bottom floor. I do want to avoid taking damage, even if that means delaying the Siren of the Sea. We have a very small deck, so we will draw into her very soon. And I think it's it's time to start hitting Fell with everything we've got. And by that I mean with Frostbite. Uh, let's also get Slays as much as we can. And uh, this one is frozen and deals actually a significant amount of damage. Maybe I use it against Fell, who has some spell weakness. It's my highest damage spell anyways. Um, let's play the ultimate pennant and start hitting Fell quite, quite hard. Uh, this top bottom floor is still all right. We will have a lot of Titan to Titan. Uh, Siren of the Sea. Definitely want the Titan to here, especially as Fell is on the floor. Let's subsuming blade for the kill here. Uh, hmm. I think double stack is better because our deck is so small. Let's focus on stacking as much rock fight on fell as we can get because we can get quite a lot. Uh, we need to keep these guys in mind though. They are a bit of an issue. Uh, drain on one of them will be enough to save Tethys. I think I do want to play the Titan's Teeth first, then Drain. Maybe I discard the ultimate penance. Um, 
how much damage do we need on these guys? If Tethys survives, he will deal 15, 25 to each of these. So the backliner does need some extra damage. Let's play a Titan group here at the very least. Um, then we drain the backliner because the frontliner will die to frostbite. And the backliner will have enough sap that it's not going to be a problem. So we can play the other Titan's teeth on the bottom floor. And then next up we drain this backliner. Uh, sadly that didn't work out as we hoped, but it's still okay. Let's get all the damage onto Fell we can, and especially all the Frostbite. I do want to get a slay with the subsuming blade. Uh, probably best to slay this guy. Uh, the damage is probably more important here. And then we drain and tighten through spell again. Let's just play all the titan's teeth on the floor. We can't save Tethys, but it's a decent amount of frostbite. Uh, but I think we won't get the flying kill because Fell is gonna come down now. It's a lot of titan's teeth. Like a lot, a lot. Now imagine if those all had double stack. It would be pretty decent. Um, Bounty Stalk or Formless Child Remnant Pack? No. We want more draw. We want to be able to play more uh, Titan's Teeth. We also want to get as much draw as possible. Unit up, uh, card up, uh, spell upgrades? Yeah. Spells gain an extra upgrade slot? Yeah. Double stack. Yep. And the final upgrade, what should it be? Should it be holdover? That's not necessary. We draw so many of these. Anyways. Uh, the final upgrade on this one should probably be spell damage. We entirely honest. Uh, let's cost reduce the other one though. Uh... It's also cost. Let's cost reuse the drain instead. And then we reroll. Upgrade a spell to remove consume. Not really. Yeah, that's certainly true. Nightbreeze, flying kills will be harder without effigy. Yeah, I'm. At this point, maybe, yeah, at this point, maybe I could save. I will buy another Amber Storm, but I was really looking to upgrade this Titan's Tooth to the maximum. It was important to me. We will still get a large amount of gold from this combat. And we want more Frostbite from Tethys. Because this single combat is worth about a thousand gold. That's a lot of damage to take on our cold Celia. This order for maximum uh, efficiency next turn. This first wave will be the hardest to deal with. My Siren will survive that, but we need a few more in-count triggers, or we just play it rain. 
Uh, let's get the slay on this guy. We drop the Mollusk Mage actually on this floor this time. We do have the space. Um, I will use it rainy also. We will get another 24 damage from the Siren. I can just play everything. Uh, let's take some frostbite on this guy. Uh, maybe I should have used one on the wild wings. And we get some incant on the siren. Keep it healthy. Uh, let's remove this guy with the dagger. damage uh, someone help me here why are our flash freezes 24 damage I get I guess we get seven from the mollusk mage but other than that I don't really see where they get the extra 14 damage hmm, the titan's tooth as well gets an extra 14 damage so yeah something seems to be happening with the mollusk mage i just don't know what uh i will real quickly write a bug report because the mollusk mage bug has been around for ages uh usually it was when the mollusk mage Damage boost to cards multiple times when he is not on the floor I cast the spell on. Uh, some of my spells are getting a plus fiatze magic power from him apparently no matter where I play it but the old one has to do with mollusk mage dying and the spell damage not going away and here it's applying multiple times yeah FNC Craig, I am, after all, a beta tester in this game, and uh, I think I should be writing the bug reports when I spot uh, when I spot the bug, because I think it's I do like this game a lot, and I I do think it deserves to be bug free eventually, uh, well as, as well as that is possible in a modern game uh, I think we drain here and we just throw out the Titan's teeth here on the bottom Now let's hope we can get a kill here. We got the drain, so that's definitely promising. And we actually do have the kill. I did a surprising amount of damage with this 
cards. Some of these cards still seem to be getting the plus 7 from the Mollusk Mage. Uh, Flash Freeze still gets a plus 14. Can't say how much Subsuming Blades get. And this Titan's Tooth would deal 15 by base, but he gets a plus 14 as well. So no idea what exactly is happening there, but... I think I do want the second train, even though it's not upgraded. Yeah, flying kill will be almost impossible without an Allfrost effigy. And do we need more removals? We still have a frozen lens in the deck. Yeah, dupes and removals. Uh, the frozen lands can go. And I think the urchin spines can go as well. We don't really need them. Uh, Temper talisman? Probably not. That reroll. Uh, winged indulgence might actually make a difference here. Uh, should we take it? I think I want it. Uh, spell upgrades. Consumer removal doesn't matter to me. Holdover is interesting if I can find that. So I think I will be looking for that. There is holdover. Uh, on the drain, I think. We need that on the drain. Or maybe on the subsuming blade? Uh, no, it doesn't. It's not quite big enough for that to work. No, I don't fear the shade wings. Uh, it's more so that Cold Celia can actually stay alive. And you could potentially go on the Siren of the Sea, to be honest. Uh, I mean, you don't have any real scaling good enough to kill the Seraph in flight. So basically, we need to set up on the bottom floor, I think. With our scaling units, that being the sirens. And having two of them makes things a lot easier. While we also want the top floor for other reasons. So, uh, Titan's Tooth is definitely great on this floor. We need some additional damage on this guy, or maybe just some drain. It's gonna be enough. Um, Cold Celia can actually be here in the second floor, that works out quite well. Let's look to me played here. Apply some more frostbite to this guy, so they actually die. Actually, I should just apply that to the Seraph. Uh, maybe I want to actually drain. I will have that drain on holdover, so I want to drain the pyre wings because of the ember drain. I can drain again this turn, so that's not a problem. At least one Titan's Tooth goes here, probably the other one as well. The Subsuming Blade goes on the bottom floor. Uh, maybe it's better to Subsuming Blade the Gilded Wing, actually. We don't really need to grow the Subsuming Blade anymore. And let's just apply some Sap to the Seraph. Uh, I should have frozen that, probably. But I do have the other drain on holdover, so it's not that big of a deal. We need some additional damage against these guys. Uh, I do want this guy to die. So we'll use a subsuming blade. And drain goes on this guy. Let's use the hold over drain fur. Then we can also drain the Gilded Wing. 
And Seraph is on the bottom floor, which means we can apply a lot of frostbite to him very easily. We need some extra damage against this guy or a drain. The Gilded Wing here will die, so it's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, so we can drain the other Gilded Wing. And play another one of these. Uh, 7 sap, so he won't be able to deal any damage to our pyre, so we don't need to care about him. Um, I do want at least one Titan's Tooth here on the bottom floor, but who can go here easily? Uh, let's also use this one, and then we can apply some more Frostbite to the Sarah. Uh, we definitely want some frostbite on the bottom floor. Uh, maybe killing this guy will actually... Yep, that's already enough to kill the Gilded Wing. So we can play the other Titan's Teeth on the bo uh, top to hit the Seraph. And then we drain the... Lightning. And that's the final wave. So let's throw all our Titan's Teeth out here. And drain the Seraph. Mm, flying kill was impossible, especially against this Seraph. With the Perch half the Frostbite on him. But we did manage to get a no damage bottom floor kill at least, so that's something. We did get the... Pretty good baseline, but nothing too exciting. We had a few top floor kills early on. And some second floor kills. So our score will be decent, but not great. We also spent a bit more gold than we probably should have. This Titan's Tooth was very powerful, very interesting, quite fun. Um... Yeah, I think our score is well enough to be in the top 30. Yep, it is. Rank 20, pretty nice. Uh, not, not the best, but pretty okay.